So here's an example of a uh, object on a spring. This time it's a baby in a baby bouncer that's meant to have the baby push off and bounce up and down. Um, so this is kind of a fun device. Um, for parents. I think it's fun for the kid, but I don't know. Um, but the child bounces um, and they give us a little bit of data on this. So they say if the spring stretches um, a quarter of a meter while supporting an eight kilogram child, what is the force constant? So the first thing we can do is say how much it stretches when the kid is there. So we can think about this is really just a mass on a spring, right? This is not very glamorous but it's set up and then we add the additional mass. So that would be the mass that was added would be our mg and that would be balanced by, before the kid starts kicking to bounce up and down, would be balanced by this um, spring force, right? For the child to be suspended right at this level. So you would say you have kx, um, would be the spring force that would be up and mg would be down. That would be the magnitude of it. Um, and so we could say that mg is equal to k times the displacement. So the displacement from equilibrium. So that would be 0.25 meters. And we can find the spring constant of this spring. So the mass is 8 kilograms. G, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. And so we get K is 8 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, all over 0.25 meters. The meters cancel, and I get something that looks like times 9.8. Okay, I get 314 kilograms per meter second, which is also the same thing as newtons per meter, right? So generally you say the units of the spring constant are going to be force divided by distance, newtons over meters. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. You divide by a meter, so you get the same units there. Okay, so that's our spring constant. Okay, so that's answer to A. B is what is the time for one complete bounce? Okay, so for this, we need to know the time for one bounce, time for one bounce would be a situation where we're looking at sort of a position versus time where we're going like this, right? Where the kid pushes off and goes up and then comes back down. So the time for one bounce would be the period and so the period is equal to 2 pi over this omega. And we can just know that omega is equal to the square root of k over an m for a mass spring system. And so this is pretty straightforward. We're just calculating it. So I get square root of 314 kilograms per meter second all over 8 kilograms. So that's going to give me per second. In this case, it would be gradients per second. So we get 3.314 divided by 8. Take the square root of that. And that gives me 6.26 per second is my angular frequency, my angular um, oscillation, so radians per second. And so my period is just going to be 2 pi over 2.6 um, per second, which is approximately equal to 1 second. So it'll be about a second between bounces. That seems okay. It's not too fast anyway, and it's not too, um, too, uh, uh, and it's not too long either of sort of having the kid in the air and then coming back down. Um, then the question is, how fast is the child going to be going if the amplitude of her bounce is 0.2 meters? So she pushes off 20 centimeters. So um, we've got an amplitude right there, right, of 0 0.2 meters. And so that um, amplitude, uh, we can find the velocity. Our velocity expression is minus a omega sine of omega t. And we're asked for our maximum, b max, is going to be when we have uh, 
sine of omega t is at its maximum or minimum value. The maximum value is 1 or minus 1 if you care about the signs, but we can take the absolute value. So we're looking at where this is equal to 1. So V max is going to be A omega, and that's going to be right at the middle as the kid's coming down and then starting to rest and then go back up. So A times omega, so the amplitude is 0 0.2 meters times this 6.26 per second. So that's going to be, I think, about a 1.2 or so meters per second. Okay, and so that gives us sort of a picture of how we look at oscillations and the kinds of things that we can figure out. Now this is a highly damped system, so it's not like the kid kicks once and then we're done. Um, it damps out pretty fast, so the kid continues to get exercise and work her legs um, as she's practicing to be able to walk and stand up.